Now, I know who you are because I ain't been under a rock for the last 36 years. What's your name and who are you? Okay, everybody want to know what's my name. My name depends on when you met me. If you met me on 116th Street when Al Poe and them was getting money, I was gambling Danny. When you met me when I was playing the chicks, I was dancing Danny. Okay? If you met me when I was growing up, I was Danny boy. And if you meet me now, I'm Dapper Dan. So you got a choice. Mm. <laughs> oh. Kill me! New York, so nice, they name it twice. They say if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. But the thing is, if you can make it here, you don't really need to try to make it anywhere else. The people, the energy, the tension. New York made me. The same way it made so many before me, and it'll make so many after me. This is homegrown. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Your story is the ultimate come up tale of a homegrown hustler. Yes. I not only respect and love you, but the admiration is something that I take and I put into my daily, everyday life and my career because you a living legend and somebody that I've seen actually do it. Step by step, a fashion icon. How important is it to you to dream big? Oh, that's super important to me. That's super important. And I'm trying to think, was there ever a time that I didn't do that? <laughs> you know, so it was like instilled in me, you know. I saw so much, you know, being in Harlem, you know. Will Chamberlain had a place here. Count Basie's had a place there. You know, Sugar Ray Robinson had a place here. I saw all these black folks that really came off. That's why, this is here, this is why Dabba Dan, Gucci is here, man. So people can see, look, yo, he did that, we, I can do that. Just imagine it, my father was born in 1898. 33 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, right? So I asked my father, like, remember when they, when they went to the moon? Mm -hmm. I said, Daddy, he said, damn boy, you believe they went up there? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, boy, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? <what> I'm <laughs> he said, boy, you stupid. <laughs> Just to give you an idea. <laughs> Fast things change. But that lesson from my father taught me that I said, damn, I don't want that to happen to me. You see me with young people all the time. I don't want to be around nobody with old ideas. My son Danny Jr., he helped me make the transition. I had to learn computer graphics. So I had him teach me. My son Jelani teaches me everything about the phone. I'm gonna totally embrace everything that's taking place to keep me on top of what's going on in this race. Mm. You dig? Mm. Mm. What makes Harlem so special? Uh, the diversity. We had the Georgia boys. We had the uh, uh, Alabama boys. You know, all these different. And you know what? That's what made even the Italians. You had the strongest Italians left Italy to come here. They was poor. The strongest Irish left Ireland to come here. And the strongest blacks that wasn't going to put up with what was going on in the South, they came in. And when they relocated here, now, I'm the first generation here, and I'm surrounded by all these, all this power, all these saws, all these people coming out the South who wasn't gonna go for it, you know mm. what I'm saying? And that's who I learned from. I learned from, like, the revolutionary part, and I learned the street part, and I started, using, and then as I slipped out, I started seeing what the street part was doing, I say, oh, man, I gotta pull out of this. Mm. I gotta pull out of this. That's why you see me in, like me, Pee Wee Kirkland, and, New York Freddy and every one of them gangsters, I knew them when they was dirt poor. And you can ask them, you know? But I just got just enough of that revolutionary fervor that was jumping off in the 60s to pull me out of that. So that's what made Harlem what it was, man. It was the best hustlers, the strongest people who wasn't gonna put up with what was going on in the South and came here determined to make it, man. My father only went to the third grade, man. What other artists from Harlem do you feel represents the community the way it should? Right now, you, Ferg, I like the path that like um, Dave East is on. You know, almost all of y'all are making like the kind of moves. It's gonna be a growing process and y'all in different stages, yeah? But uh, I like what all of y'all are doing. Y'all taking people with y'all. If I see an artist come up in Harlem and he ain't got nobody from Harlem with him, then I'm, I'm a little skeptical. I haven't seen that yet. So the biggest thing to me is who you take with you. 
You know, the reason why you can see me walk around Harlem, go here, everywhere, because I ain't never got no money by myself. Hmm. That's a gem. Whenever I found a way to make money, I took somebody with me. So the most important thing a young artist could do today is to take somebody with him. I mean, each one teach one. And like I was telling you before the camera started rolling, like, you know, what you've been to me, my whole life as a vessel, somebody I could always get information and gems from. I want to be that to the next generation. That's why, you know, I always work with artists before they even get to the peak to where they got to go to, especially from Harlem, because I'm pro Harlem. Yeah. So the ASAP Rockies, the Davies. But you, but you, you so natural, it's just like, okay, yeah, that's our homie, that's our hero. Yeah, yeah, he a rapper. <laughs> it's like that, you know, you like, you like that guy for us, you know what I'm saying? What was it like having a store in the late 80s, early 90s in Harlem. Let me tell you what walking the line means. Walking the line is being right in the middle of the hustler world and that transitional world. You dig what I'm saying? And Nipsey Hussle, that's what he was doing. He was walking the line. It's always dangerous when you walk the line because you're getting locked between two worlds. Over here, you're trying to cross over and be a positive thing in the community. And over here, you still embedded to the streets. That's why you hear me say, you can't be in it and not of it. You gotta make a choice. That cost me $115,000, right? When Mike Tyson had that oh, fight. Oh, shit with Mitch Green. Yeah, when Mike Tyson had that fight in my store, messed up my business, the newspapers and all of them offered me $115,000 to sell the pictures that just came out my book after 30 years. They offered me $115,000 to sell the pictures. But because I'm from the street, and I knew that what would happen to him if I showed the picture, I couldn't do it. Think how the game change. The streets start, this is really important. The streets start turning in on the streets. This is what, how it was happening. The streets implode. The streets will turn on itself. So now I'm walking the line. Nipsey walking the line. Here come the street. We don't want no, we ain't trying to be that thing in the street, right? Some dudes kidnap a dude right in front of my store. You know, my workers want to run out and get involved. I said, we ain't got nothing to do with that. The next week, they try to get me. Oh, wow. This early, how I got this, shot. This, this the late 80s? Yeah, this is how I got shot. So I fought them off. They shot me in the back. I got the bullet in my neck. But that's what happened in the street, man. They know I'm from the street, and they know if I live, what's going to happen, man. You dig know what I'm saying? And you see the dude, the same thing with Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. Cross over and leave that, man. Leave that. Let the street take care of the street. And if you cross over in that other life, live that life. Don't get caught on that line. Hmm. Don't get caught on that. I'm serious, man. Don't be caught nah, on that know, line I'm... trying to live both of them lives. I know. I know. You know, it's one thing Nip used to always tell me, it's not what's on you, it's what's in you. Right? So that was how, you know, we always moved through being niggas from the streets and actually inside of something that's not of the streets, but might follow street code. But what does homegrown mean to you? Homegrown is like you paid attention. Home is where you get it from. Grown is what you become. And if you homegrown right, you develop. You homegrown wrong, you don't develop. You might not even last. You stayed there, and you grew up there, and you became a man there. That's homegrown. That's Harlem for us. That's home. How has that shaped you today? I'm the sum total of everything that I've ever learned in Harlem. Sum total. I'm, I'm the sum total of all the revolutionaries that I've spoke to, of all the hustlers. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all of that together, and I had a chance to see that from all angles, you know? And that's what I try to pass on to the younger guys, man. Right. You know? What's an early fashion memory for you when you knew you was up to something? Oh, let me tell you something, man. You know what's crazy? Let me give you the craziest fashion moment when the whole game changed. Mm. You ready for this one? I'm ready. This changed the whole game. Jay-Z blew up, right? Fat Joe comes at Jay-Z. You know, what you know about this and that, so-and-so, this and that, Harlem, this and that. You know, Alpo and all that, this and that, right? Mm -hmm. So um, Jay-Z say, I don't need that, that, but then I got a G on my chest. But now all the young people don't understand what that's about. 
That's between Jay-Z and Fat Joe. But me, knowing both of them and knowing what the game is about, how rap go, you understand? I know that the beat and he just had to get back and I and I just happened to rhyme and I was <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had to drop it, you know, he had to drop it to bail out, right? So let me show you why this moment is so important, right? So dig this. I'm downtown. I get in there, everybody, everybody, all the young people, all the rappers, everybody got on jerseys. Mm. They coming up to me and say, yo, Dap, uh, they don't even know I'm Dap. They say, yo, where the bathroom at? <laughs> <laughs> they think you, you know, work like, at the uh, joint. <laughs> what you mean about the bathroom? <laughs> Stuff going along. I said, damn, man. <laughs> I'm like an old man up in there, right? So then, so, <laughs> oh. jerseys is killing them, right? So now I'm in the underground while all this is going on. And my homies that I'm, you know, they doing their own thing and they knocking them jerseys off. And they buying houses. They killing them. They know them jerseys like 300, like 300,000. Yeah. Right? You know, they right. was killing off them jerseys, right? What's this? Jay Z say, you cannot be grown and sexy. In a jersey. In a jersey. You got to have button down. All my friends, they had truckloads and, you know, Warehouses full of jerseys. They couldn't sell the jersey for thirty dollars, man. He killed the game. Jay Z mm. killed the game. Let me mm. tell you the power now and what I'm talking about. Now, if Jay Z could say something about me and it don't kill my game, you dig? But he can say something about the jerseys and kill a game, and that's when I woke up. I said, "Damn, I'm locked in the street." Because mm. the dude was saying, "Young dude, come to the store." Say, "Yo, that." What Jay talking about, man? What that bullshit Jay talking about, man? <laughs> Give me two of them Gucci suits over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, shit. But the main reason is show my power and it showed Jay Z, the rap power through Jay Z, and then let the world know, especially these luxury brands know, we can take over this game. In two seconds. That was the number one move. When Jay did that, we could take over this game. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I talk about that moment. That's a powerful moment for the game. Everybody needs to know that. Something. That's ill. Yo, is, is it any um, young Harlem or NYC brands, young brands that caught your eye? Well, you know what, man? Um, there's a lot of young guys in Harlem that's making clothes. So I don't want to single none out, but I like the path they're taking. And I'm going to be telling them about how they can um, really excel. But now, above them, there's a brand that uh, who, who reached the second level already. And that's uh, Pia Morse. Kirby? I love Pia Morse. Yeah, so I love, love that Kirby, Kirby is like, I'm really like proud of what he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and he got, I want him to keep going, but Harlem is on the way. Harlem is definitely on the way. Harlem, definitely... We got so much talent here. You know what I'm saying? I just, we just gotta learn how to focus that talent. And stick together. You always stick preach, together. That's you always right. preach unity to me though, since I was a kid. That's so. right. Bust this, let me tell you, let me let me dig this in. This is what killed me, right? I pop up on the front cover of the New York Times Sunday edition entertainment section. Entertainment you know? section. The right. front cover, right? Mm. Yo, Dapper Dan in the paper, they got him on the front cover. You know what they say? What? Damn, what he did? Oh, man. They thought I was locked up. You know what I mean? The culture I come from, it was easier for them to understand that to see me on the front cover of the New York Times in handcuffs than as a fashion icon. It's crazy, wicked, right? I love my community, but they still, they walk up to me today. Yo, Dap, you open the day? I need my pants tailored. I said, go ask Tom Ford. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yo, bust it. It's the Kush God Smoke Dizzle. I'm with my Uncle Dapper Dan, and yeah. this is Homegrown.